So I recently had to migrate one of my servers from one host to another. The server host I chose to move to is called Streamline Servers. So far, they seem pretty good. Only time will tell as to how good they are. But I thought I'd do a video on how to order your own Rust server and how to do that with Streamline Servers. So from their homepage, just go to Game Servers and you can click on the Rust logo. Now it says here it's from $18 per month, but actually once you go through to the Order Now page, it actually starts from $15. And if you choose a payment schedule um, other than one month, you get an additional discount. In addition to that, some locations such as Miami, New York, Texas, and Germany, give you an additional $1.50 off. However, if you want a Rust server from Singapore or Japan, that'll be an extra $7.50 per month. So I'm just gonna choose a server local to me. And you'll see the price is updated on the side here. Um, CPU speed and CPU priority. Um, I've never felt the need for any of these and actually on this particular server they're not even available. But if you feel the need then those options are available on some servers for you. Server memory. Our server runs around the 10 gigabyte mark. Occasionally it will go over but Streamline give you a little bit of leeway uh, for those incidents. About 2 gigabytes which is very generous. Um, and then they will restart your game. Um, our previous host would actually stop your game and we would have to log into the control panel and restart it from there, which is obviously not ideal in the middle of the night. In terms of the slots, you can have 20 or 50 included in your standard payment. Alternatively, you can opt for um, more slots at extra cost so you can see that this goes up to 400 for an extra $30 a month. Lastly, we just need to add some details about our server. So first of all, we need to add a host name. And for this, I'm just gonna add tutorial server and an Archon password. And for this, I'm just gonna have tutorial server 2000. Now you can just check your details one last time and just hit continue. From here you can check your order. You can see that you're ordering a Rust server. Um, that's $13.50 per month. Um, you can apply a promo code if you got it. Alternatively, for 15% off of your first month, you can like and follow Streamline on Twitter and Facebook. I'm just going to agree to the terms of service and privacy policy, and we're going to check out So once you've made your payment, you will get an invoice that looks like this. And that is pretty much all you need to do. Um, Streamline will process your order and you'll get an email telling you when it's ready to access. Once you've read your emails and you're ready to start configuring your server, head back to the Streamline server's webpage uh, and go to login and just choose the game panel that best represents your local area. So I'm going to pick EU and you'll see a page like this. Um, this just confirms your session so it will tell you your IP address and if you've got any unread messages. To see what services you've got running go to game services and you'll be given a list of the servers that you have running with Streamline. One of the things I would recommend you do, unless you're very good at remembering numbers, is go up to grid settings, go to configure columns, and add the name of your server. Hit apply. You can then rearrange these headings to best suit your needs. And once you're happy with them, uh, just go back up to grid settings and do save settings. 
From here, I want to go into the tutorial server. You can actually click anywhere on this bar. This is the service home for your server. From here, you can see most of the important information about your server, such as IP addresses, uh, stats, and there's a whole host of functions down here that allow you to perform specific tasks. Uh, in addition to this, you'll also have a file manager, which, as the name implies, allows you to interact with the file system. Uh, you have a console, which will show you in real time what your server is doing. You also have scheduled tasks, so you can set up restarts, updates, and various other bits and pieces. And then you have actions, which, if you're lucky, you'll never have to go into um, the most important thing in here being the reinstall, which allows you to completely nuke your installation and start from scratch. Going back to Service Home. First thing we're going to do is set up a new command line. So we go to Command Line Manager. Go to Custom Command Lines. Do New. We're going to give this a description. To add something to your command line, simply tick the line that you want to add. So in this case, server FPS, and then edit the line as required. So here, I'm going to put 60, because that's actually the upper limit of what Streamline allow. And I'm also going to change the Archon password, because for whatever reason, it doesn't auto-populate with the password that you put in, in the purchase screen. If you don't want the server to restart, make sure this is highlighted. Scroll down and do save. And then to activate this command line, do select. So your server should now use this command line when it restarts. Go back to service home. The next thing we're going to do is start configuring your server. So go to configuration files, go to your server.cfg file and click on text editor. To begin with, we're going to give our server a new name. So just type in server.hostname and then in quotes, just give it your desired name. So just call this Tutorial Server Germany. If you want to give your server a description, do server dot description. And then once again in quotes. And if you want to create a new line, you can just do backslash n. So if you want to have two new lines, just do it twice and then continue your message. And if you want to give your server a website for more information, just do server.url. Once you're finished, you can save and exit. Go back to Service Home and restart the server. When the player's stat changes from 0 out of 0, your server should be ready to connect. Copy the connection info IP address. Head to Rust. Go to your console using F1 and just type in client.connect, paste in your connection info and hit return. And 
and here we are on your very own server. Now that we've verified that the server is working and that you can connect to it, it's a good idea to finish uh, any configuration that you're going to do to it. So going back to configuration files and into server.cfg, we can add as many configurations into this file as we need. The most popular are the world size and seed. So go into your web browser of choice head to rustmaps.com and you can choose a map from here using the configuration to the left. So I'm going to choose a map at 4250 which is the minimum size to get a railway but I'm also going to scroll down a little bit and tick select all monuments checkbox and that will include all of the large monuments and then just choose a map that you like the look of anything with a heading at the top you probably have to pay for if you just want a procedurally generated map then just look around until you find one you like so I'm going to choose this one because it has an upside down smile in the snow and I'm just going to copy the seed So back in our config file, I'm going to do server dot world size, all one word, four two five zero, and then on a new line, server dot seed, and I'm just going to paste the seed in. So once again, save and exit. and go back to the service home and I'm going to restart again now that the server's restarted you can go back to Rust check out your map So loading in again, if we have a look at the map, we can see our new island with the upside down smile. On the subject of maps, your choice can be quite important as it directly affects the memory usage of your server. So if you were to compare maps at different sizes, for instance, here we see a 2,500 world size versus a 3,500 world size, and lastly, a 4,500 world size. You can see that the memory usage increases considerably as the map gets bigger. So this will directly affect whether you need to choose the 16 gigabytes of memory when you're configuring your server. Every now and then you'll need to do an update to your server to ensure that it's up to date. To do this, all you need to do is click on the Steam Update icon in the Functions section. You'll get a little box that you can agree to, just click OK, and the update will pretty much do itself. Generally an update takes about 10 minutes to do. It can be a bit longer if there's a lot of servers updating at the same time, but generally 10 minutes is about right. If everything's gone well, you'll see the process has completed at the bottom of the screen. Now's a good time to go back to your service home and see if your server is restarting. 
Like before, when you see the player stat change from zero out of zero, your server is ready to use. In terms of getting a basic Rust server live, that's really all you need to know. I hope this video is useful. Uh, if you have any other questions, then feel free to ask me down in the comments and I'll try and help you out. Otherwise, uh, like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye.